when you are intentional and living authentically in a sense of purpose, like you were, for instance, about football, you know who you are. So you really get that strong sense of identity and purpose and identity lead to connections and community. And that's the magical part. Like, again, we focus on money and did you become that football player in the NFL? No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. But by living authentically in your purpose, you created community connections and skills. And yeah. those things led you to a life where you could continue following that purpose, not maybe the exact same purpose, mm -hmm. but that community and connections we're actually the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It isn't purpose. And it isn't even knowing your identity. The pot of gold really is what flows from that, which is those communities and connections, which lead to a full life, right? That's, that's kind of what we wake up for. So the big question then is how do we find our purpose? Well, I can give you several answers to that. One of the ways I talk about in the book is with dying patients, we do what's called a life review, right? That's a structured series of questions where people look back at their life and we ask them questions like, what was important to you when you were younger? What were some of your goals? What were your best accomplishments? What were your biggest failures? Who were the important people in your life? What do you want to accomplish before you die? So this is called the life review. And actually, one of the great ways to start looking at what is my purpose today is to do your own life review, but not because you're a dying patient, but because you're reviewing your life and trying to figure out what's important to you. And in fact, a really simple version of the life review is the one sentence, sir. And I always say, ask yourself, if I found out I was dying in the next six months, what would I always regret never having the energy or courage or time to do? And if you really kind of ponder that and work through that statement and become real thoughtful on it, you can start harking to this idea of what is purposeful in my life. That is one way. But there are so many other ways to really start thinking about what your purpose is. One of the things I often tell people is look at your childhood. What got you really excited as a kid before you worried about money, before society told you you could or couldn't do things? What did you really dig as a kid? Believe it or not, as adults, when we finally have the space and time, a lot of us go back to our passions of childhood. So that's one thing is to look at your childhood and what you love there. Another is to look at your job, even if you hate your job. And this really worked for me. What is the one thing you really love about your job, even if you don't love your job in general? For me, that was hospice work. So I realized quickly that helping the dying and terminally ill was part of my purpose, even though this whole idea of being a doctor no longer felt like part of my purpose. So another thing to do is look at your job today. And is there any piece of it that you really love, even if you don't like the whole job? Another one, a question I love asking people is when is the last time you woke up in the middle of the night, excited by an idea and you couldn't fall back asleep. And so what happens when that happens? A lot of times you wake up the next morning tired, you've got work to go to, you put it somewhere in the back of your mind and you never think about it again. But often those are the whisperings of purpose. Like what are the things that really rile me up? Ask other people, mm -hmm. talk to your family and friends, ask them the specific question. When do I appear most alive to you? And what am I doing at that time? So these are all lots of little threads that we can pull on to start saying, okay, what feels like purpose to me? And guess what? If none of that works, then you can use the spaghetti method, which is throw a bunch of spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. What that means is you say yes to a lot of new experiences, ones that maybe even scare you. And after each one, you evaluate it and say, how did that feel while I was doing it? Did it feel mm. good? Do I want to do that again? Do I feel excited about the prospect of moving forward and learning more about that? And so try enough new things and eventually you'll find some that you like.